Good morning, folks. Aaron Dore here with Wyoming Gun Owners. I have an early morning uh, broadcast for you guys today. I saw an article on Senator Bouchard's Facebook page last night that caught my attention, and I wanted to bring it to your attention today in this video. I'm going to throw up a watch party a minute quick before I get going. Give me just a moment to take care of that, and then we're going to kick off this uh, this video right now. Give me just a second here, guys. Let me know where you're watching from. Post your location in the comment section. Helps it be seen by more people. We always appreciate that. I'm going to post a couple links here as well before I get too far into this. And we're going to kick off this uh, very difficult video that we're going to do here. Just about done with all my links and comments. There we go. All right. So as of, pin comment, as of what, three days ago now, Red flag gun seizures are the law of the land in neighboring Colorado, and they are actively being enforced. I would imagine there's probably a whole list of people that, that the uh, that, that gun grabbers had in mind for a red flag gun seizure that the, the, the moment the clock struck 12 on New Year's Eve. And so it's already the law of the land right now in nearby Colorado. And folks, there's a great email I got from Rally for Our Rights. It's a it's an awesome group to watch. If you're involved in the fight for gun rights in Colorado, if you have friends or family in Colorado, uh, the email has come out from a gal. Dead gummit. I didn't print the last page off. Um, the, the look up Rally for Our Rights in Colorado. They do great emails on what's going on in the fight for gun rights in Colorado. And they have a very uh, terrifying email that came out yesterday with what – or the actual law looks like, what reality is now for neighbors in Colorado. And folks, this is going to happen all over the country if gunners don't stand up and fight back. So I'm going to read off some of these bullet points so you can realize just how horrific it is now for our neighbors in Colorado. Here's what you have to know if you're red flagged. Number one, I'm going to read off just a couple of these, the big ones, if you will. Red, red flag orders are now called Extreme Risk Protection Orders, or ERPOs. These are civil cases, not criminal. This means that you have not, have not been charged with a crime. So they're taking away guns from people who have not been charged. The hell with convicted. You haven't even been charged with a crime before your guns are being taken away. If you are served with an ERPO or red flag order, the court has already had their first hearing and it has taken place without you. This hearing uh, included the petitioner and a judge and the judge granted the seizure order based on the accusations provided by the petitioner. So when they come and knock on your door, when they come to your home, when they come to your business, whatever, they've already met with a judge. You were not allowed to be there. You didn't even know about it. You couldn't provide your own defense. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, let's see here. Keep on going here. It's not, it's, it's not good. Uh, this will be a temporary red flag ERPO order. The order will have a future court date where the ERPO will either be made permanent, most likely, or will be dismissed. So let's let's discuss this. You know, is there a chance that you could get your rights back and your guns back? Yeah, maybe. But we all know how this works. Liberal court, I mean, liberal judges all across the country, and holy heck, folks, Wyoming is no different. Look, look, look at the cases on guns right now in Wyoming. Look at how they're treating standard ground law. So a liberal judge will have already decided that you should have your guns taken away and you have to come back before that same judge and then prove that you should have your guns returned to you. What do you think the odds are that that judge is going to say, oh, yeah, I must have been wrong last week. Okay, yeah, you're fine. You're good to go. It's not going to happen, folks. It's not going to happen, at least not very much, if ever. Um, number, let's see here, number five, the uh, the search or the um, the ERPO may or may not come with a search warrant. And if you guys have been watching some of the news and some of the pro-gun sheriffs uh, like uh, Steve Reams in Colorado, they've been sounding the alarm as, high, as loud as they can that in Colorado, ordinarily, when they write an ERPO or red flag seizure order, they will at the same time write a search warrant. And so in many cases, 
they're going to be allowed, and certainly in, in, in places like Denver and stuff, where people hate gun owners, they're going to be able to come to your house at 3 o'clock in the morning, kick the damn door down, whatever they want, because they have a search warrant, and you are a man with a gun, right? Or a woman with a gun. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see him take a battering ram to a door, toss in a flashbang, and race in your house to grab your guns, because by God, this paper says that we can. So it may or may not come with, but often will come with a search warrant. Law enforcement may very well assess you on site for a mental health hold. They may or may not assess you on site for a mental health hold. And if they can find some reason to think that you're like a danger to yourself by whatever BS standard they want to invent, they're going to haul you down for a three-day hold. And after that, good luck getting your guns back. Good luck. This is this is evil stuff. This is evil stuff. And this pertains to Wyoming. I'm getting to the conclusion here to that point in just a matter of moments. Stand with me. They will they may or may not request to take your firearms. They're going to take the dang firearms and or your CCW permit. They're going to take your permit too. It's just the way it's going to be. Because when the temporary order is granted, you are then put into the NIC the NICS, I'm sorry, you know, NICS and, and the FBI databases as a prohibited person. So the minute the order is issued, you're now, you're now a prohibited person. And I guarantee you they're going to take away your carry permit as well as part of that process. If they do allow you to have the time to surrender your firearms, you have 24 hours to do so, scratch that, 48 hours to do so. And if you don't do it, it's a class two misdemeanor and you have to file an affidavit of compliance don't you love that phrase, compliance, with state-level uh, gun grabbers, that says that all of your firearms have been surrendered. Folks, this is absolute tyranny. This is absolute tyranny. This is happening right now. It is law today, right now, in Colorado. And, folks, it is going to happen in every state where gun owners don't stand up and fight back with all they have. And that includes red states. Florida passed this in 2018, red state. Indiana's had this for a while, you know, red state. It's on the move right now, right now in other red states. Iowa, it's being pushed in Iowa by Republicans. It's being sponsored in Pennsylvania right now by Republicans. It's being pushed in Michigan by Republicans. It's being co-sponsored in Minnesota by Republicans. It's being pushed by the governor of Arkansas, a Republican. This is not a party issue. Moderate losers in the Republican Party believe they can do this, and it makes them look reasonable. So they can tell their friends in the fake news media that they're reasonable because they supported or sponsored or you know, backed or voted for a red flag gun seizure. Oh, we're not attacking the Second Amendment. We're just trying to get help to those who need to have help. Does this sound like help to you? Does this sound like help to you? No, no, this is not help. This is an attack against our freedom. Uh, Chris says that voting isn't going to help. Uh, Chris, I'm going to have to hide your comment. You know, some of the things you're saying here. I'm sorry, man, but some of those words there might get you uh, in, in a bad spot. So I'm going to have to hide your comment, my friend. Uh, voting does help. I'm sorry, uh, you're wrong. Voting does help because primaries are painful. Primaries in Wyoming are painful. Just ask Fred Emmerich. Fred tried to get away with back in gun control for his entire career in Cheyenne, and he got wiped out by gun owners in 2018 because Wyoming gun owners went to war exposing his record. And gun owners did the rest. Gun owners threw him out to the curb. He's gone. He's gone. Primaries are painful. These people, they all they care about is power. If you threaten their power base, they don't like it. They don't like it at all. And so absolutely primaries are effective. Voting is effective. It works. That's how we got standing ground law passed. Overwhelming grassroots pressure. Governor Parson, uh, Governor Mee didn't want to do it. Governor Mee didn't want to do it. He was absolutely opposed to it. But he had, a, he had to play ball because gun owners put so much pressure on him. Lawmakers in Cheyenne, many moderates, they didn't want to do it. But they had to because there was so much pressure being poured on them from gun owners. 
in their districts. We can hold the line if we realize that there's a line to be held. And there are actual enemies in Cheyenne who will do this to us if we let them get away with it. Consider this. The same lawmakers in Cheyenne who are actively trying to pass fix NICs, actively trying to, to pass fix NICs, are the exact same lawmakers who would actively be trying to pass red flag gun seizures. Does that make sense? If they're, if they're, it, it, it's, it's so close to being a similar bill, it's, it's, it's scary. It's a mental health gun control bill that they say is actually good for gun owners when it's not, and it helps make it easier for gu the government to know who has guns. That, in a nutshell, is fix nicks. Yeah, they wrap some of their crap around it, try to make it sound nice, try to make it sound better. It's not. It's a bad bill. It's going to lead to horrible things. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. But the moderates in Cheyenne are trying to push this, and they're going to try to push it again next session. See our video on that from three days ago, I guess it was, two days ago. Um, and you can see who and how and when. But the same people who are willing to do that are going to be willing to push a red flag gun seizure bill. I mean, the list of those folks who voted for it, where the heck is this? Just in the Judiciary Interim Committee is, uh, is huge. It's huge. I mean, we, we narrowly defeated this by a small amount, uh, but uh, this, this, uh, this, this fixed Nix bill died by a very tiny margin. And a whole bunch of Republicans voted for this gun control bill. Don't forget, fixed Nix got its origins in D.C. with Dianne Feinstein. She was a champion for fixed Nicks for years and years and years. And here in, here in the state of Wyoming, the swamp runs deep. And the Republicans who backed this in the interim committee are people like Michael Von Flatteren, nasty man. Have you ever, you ever talked to Mike Von Flatteren? Oh, my gosh. Bring a bottle of, uh, you know, soap for your hands, um, you know, uh, disinfectant for your hands after you're done. Dan Kirkbride, nasty stuff. Chuck Gray held the line. Thank God for that. Who else we got? We got Bill Pownell. He voted for it. Heck, he's the guy that we're being told is going to sponsor Fix Nicks in 2020. We've called him. We've emailed him. Haven't heard back. He he vote for. I mean, these guys are all going to vote for red flags if it comes to the floor. Clark Stiff, he backed Fix Nicks. You know, Clark, he'd find some way to weasel his way to supporting uh, red flags. You know, he would. We all know they would. So all these Republicans were already backing. Fix Nicks, they're going to be willing to back a red flag gun seizure law. And in fact, that is the point. That is the point. If we don't hold a line on this bill, we're going to see problems immediately on that bill. I'm reading some of the comments here. Give me just a moment here. Are you going to be willing to do, 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 go live? Do, 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 do. I'm just reading some of the comments here. Charles, I can't quite get the, the gist of your comment here. I'll have to read this later on. It's, it's too big. I, I'm not sure what your question for us is. If you want to rephrase the question, uh, I'll, I'll answer your question any way I possibly can. Uh, we got uh, folks watching from across the state right now. We got uh, Jesse and Big Piney. We got uh, Lori. Uh, Lori, I don't think I saw your email. Um, if I did, I missed it. Maybe do me a favor, Lori, and just find me on Facebook personally. Just find my personal profile. Shoot me a request for a friend, and I'll get you that. We'll just we'll correspond that way. Um, let's see here. Chris says, until our officials get paid off, like they did in Virginia. Chris, the problem in Virginia is not, is not just that. The problem in Virginia is Republicans in Virginia stopped acting like Republicans. Pro-gun lawmakers in Virginia began to back gun control. And you know why? You know, I, I'm not arguing. I'm just giving you some context. They've started backing gun control. This is the Republicans in Virginia because they were no longer afraid of the gun rights organizations who were active, who are active in Virginia because they stopped playing hardball. They stopped playing hardball and they became, they, they became more worried about being friends with politicians. WIGO will never operate that way. We have never worried about maintaining friendships with moderate pieces of filth in Cheyenne. We don't care what they think about us. All we do 
is fight for our members and expose gun control and expose moderates and expose these little incestuous backroom deals. If WIGO stays strong, these Republicans will be forced to hold the line because if not, they're going to get their hands slapped in the primaries, and they know that. But we need your help to be to, to maintain this fight. Guys, if you haven't yet done so, join WIGO today. It's joinwigo.com. Joinwigo.com and get involved in this fight. Mary says, we need to vote them out in November, and we will, and we will. You'll be out, she says. Mary, I would uh, agree with that, but I would add one more uh, level to that. We have to vote them. And again, we can't tell folks who to vote for, but the elections that matter in Wyoming are the primaries. That's what matters. That's what counts. The general elections here count for nothing. The primaries are everything, and those are coming up. Those are coming up. And last uh, last time, 2018, Wigo punched way above our weight class in the in the primary elections, and we will continue to pound anti gunners any way we can at election time if they will not support our gun rights. That's how we fight. That's how we fight. Joe says the problem is people don't take time to do research on people running for office. They just vote R and cross their fingers. Exactly, Joe. Exactly. We'll keep doing our part to expose these people. We did, I don't know how many dozens of videos last time and YouTube videos and direct mail and the whole nine yards. We'll always be doing that, but we need everybody's support to make that happen. So guys, this fight is going on right now in Colorado. The red flag laws are happening now in Colorado, and the fight is going to be raging in Wyoming very shortly over fixed nicks. If they pass fixed nicks, they will immediately move on to this garbage. So help us stop this. Guys, join wigo.com. There's a place to go today. More information to come, guys. Have a great weekend. That's what I have time for right now. Share, 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 share this video, guys, everywhere. Put it on your Facebook page. Share it in your Tea Party organizations, the county GOP organizations. Get the word out there. Share it far and wide. More to come, guys. Have a great day. Take care.